We're going to look at uh, intersecting points and how we can use these to measure distances between the two, which can be very useful across all applications when using this machine. Um, so I've got our demo block on the Excel here, and the point I'm going to measure, it actually it has got a big chip in it, uh, but we're still able to find where the corner is by using intersection points. So if we just look at my screen, what we can see is got the camera, it's looking at the corner of a part here, and you can see that's where the chip is. Now I need the point, um, so that's what I'm going to find. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure a line. So I'm going to click the line tool, and then I'm going to click first edge tool, and I'm simply just going to click and measure my line. Just going to do two points here. There we go, there's my first line. And then what I'm also going to do is measure a line here, so I might just change the light in. Up a little bit. Oops. So there you go, I've got two lines now. I'm going to do the same at this edge. So you can see here, this is where the surface changes. So I'm just going to change my light in so I can see, get a nice contrast on the edge I need to measure. So there we go, I've just gone round and I've measured three lines. And what I want to do now is to construct the intersection. So all I want to do is say I need a point, and I want that point by intersection, which is this button here and then I can simply click the lines I wish to intersect, so that line and that line, and it gives me the intersection point here, which you can see if I put a flag net on it, that's the line it's constructed, and I can do the same thing on the other one. So I've got two points which have been intersected, and from there on in I can measure the distance between the two. So even though I can't physically see that corner point, I've been able to measure it by constructing the intersection of two lines. Okay, next we're going to look at gauge diameters. So this could be 3D or 2D gauge diameters. And um, we're going to look at our demo part again. And what we've got is we've got a cone and we've got a, a face on the top. And what we're going to do is say on that cone, there's going to be a certain diameter at a certain point from a, a gauge diameter. Um, so first of all we need to measure both features. So we're going to start off by measuring a plane on the top face. Um, so um, if we just look at the screen. So here you can see this is my top, uh, top face and then you can see that's my cone. Um, so I'm going to measure the plane. I'm going to use the actual light for this and I'm going to zoom in. Very important to zoom in. And then I'm just going to do a quick autofocus. And then I'm going to measure my plane. So I click on plane. I'm going to use focus points for this. And to keep it simple, I'm simply going to use four points. Okay, so there's my plane set up. Just going to click remeasure. So it goes round, it measures my plane, and next I can move on to measuring the cone. So I can't use the actual light for the cone, so I'm going to change my light in. I'm going to use the ring light. And it gets a bit tricky sometimes when you're zoomed in. So I might just zoom out just so I can find the, uh, the edge of my cone. Okay, so maybe I'll try that light in. Oops. So I can see my cone now, I can move here and I can zoom in. So you can see this bright light is the, the, the plane and you can see moving down, you get a band of what's in focus, that's my cone. So I'm going to say I want to measure a cone. And with focus points again, and I'm zoomed in, I'm going to click, take the first one. And again, I'm going to rotate round. Oops. 
and then I'm going to move down the cone So you can see the band's moving, the area that's in focus. Move down the cone to get a nice accurate reading. Now I'm just going to take points at the top and the bottom, but you could repeat this and put more points in the middle. And again, I'm just going to rotate that at the bottom. Just going to say that I'm going to do uh, 90 degrees, three copies. Okay, and once it goes black, I know it's, uh, it's got enough data for my, my cone. So what I'm going to do now is quickly remeasure that. It's going to go around, measure all those points, and construct the cone for me. So once I've got these two basic elements, I'm going to do an intersection of the cone and a plane, and that's going to give me a diameter. Now that diameter is going to be on the cone wherever the plane lies and it'll tell me the size of the diameter where that plane is. So to help you visualize this I'm just going to change the view. So there's my cone and there's my plane and I know if I intersect the two I get a diameter so let's do that now. So I want a circle and I want to use the intersection button again and I'm going to select my cone, select my plane and what you'll notice, if I just turn that on, it puts a, a circle, a diameter at the very top there. But what if I wanted to know what the diameter of the cone was, uh, let's say five mil from this surface? Well, to do that, I just need to construct a plane five mil away and intersect the two. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say I want a plane, and I'm gonna click on the plane I previously measured, and now I'm gonna use the offset button. And for now, I can say five mil away from that plane, down in Z. And you can see it's moved my plane down there. And now I can do exactly what I did. Again, I can select the circle. I can select the intersect button, select the plane, select the cone. And it draws the circle on the plane, and it gives me a different size. So now I can see at the bottom of the plane, five mil from uh, the cone, five mil from the top. It's 8.2 diameter and I can see the other one at the top is actually 18. So that's how you can intersect uh, on a gauging point to get your diameter from your cone. Next we're going to look at circularity or roundness and what I've got here is I've got a bore, I'm going to simply measure the bore and we're going to output the, the roundness. Okay so looking at my screen what you'll see is I've got the camera window, it's already set up, it's got the correct lighting on it, I'm using the profile light and it's in focus. So what I can do is I can say circle and I can select a uh, f-scan arc which is the edge detection tool. I can put three clicks onto the area I need to measure and then what I want to do is I want to spread this out around the circle to get as much coverage as possible. So what I'm going to do is go to the inputs and I'm going to use the rotate function for this. So I'm going to say rotate 45 degrees and we're going to have seven copies. And what you can see is what that does is it automatically spaces out my inputs. So when I go to remeasure that now, you can see it makes it nice and easy, nice and quick to program it and they're equally spaced. So next looking at the summary window, you can see the circularity is listed at the bottom there. Now, if it's not showing on your uh, summary window, we need to go to Tools, and we can go to uh, Configure Summary and Reports, and from there we can simply turn it on. If we would need to get this value into our report, then we need to give it a tolerance. So to do that, we're going to click on the circle, and then we're going to go to the Tolerance menu. So we can press the F3 button on the keyboard, and then we can go to the circularity tab and we can simply type in our tolerance I'll say 0.1 for this and then you can see it puts in a deviation if I close on that now we get a green tick in our circularity and that will also output to our report okay next we're going to look at cylindricity 
and that is the form of a cylinder. Very similar to roundness. Roundness is a 2D uh, tolerance, but we're looking at the 3D now. It's the whole of a diameter, whole of a cylinder. So for this, I'm going to need to use a touch probe. And um, all I'm going to do is use a touch probe to measure a cylinder and then output the, uh, the value of cylindricity. So just to talk you through how I'd measure a cylinder, many different ways of doing it. I'm going to measure two circles and then I'm going to construct my cylinder from those two circles. So looking at the screen, what I'm going to do is say measure a circle and then I'm going to put more inputs on. And then I'm just going to take a point with the touch probe. So I'm going to use the on-screen uh, joystick for this. Just going to take a point. There's my input. And then I'm going to use the rotate command, which I've been using quite a lot lately. And I am going to rotate 45 degrees. I'm going to make seven copies. And because of the standoff distance, it's five mil. It means I won't need to put any move points in. So it makes it nice and simple. Um, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to click OK. That's my first circle. Uh, I'm just going to remeasure that one, make sure it works. So there you can see the probe is moving round. It takes enough space to back off and go to the next point. So no move points are required. Nice evenly spaced points as well. Again, this is very important when you're taking cylindricity because you want to include the whole surface or as much of the surface as you can get. Uh, in my example, I'm just going to simply measure the top circle and then uh, a circle towards the bottom. Uh, so that's finished now. So I'm going to move my probe down and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So say measure a circle. I'm going to move into take the first point and I'm going to use a rotate command. I'm going to go 45 degrees, seven copies of that point, and then I'm just going to remeasure that circle. So I do this ideally as many times as I can to get as much data for the surface. I've only done it twice, like I said, you might want to do it uh, three or four times depending on the length of your cylinder. And then what we're going to do is we're going to construct a cylinder from these two circles. So that's what we're going to look at next. Um, so we're going to click the cylinder button, uh, we're going to put more inputs on, and then we simply click on circle six, click on circle seven. And uh, if I just change the view, you'll see there is my cylinder. You'll see again, I've got a cylindricity of 40, uh, 43 microns. And again, if I press the F3 key, I can go to add my tolerance and I can get that to come on my report. Um, so that's the cylindricity. I can give it a tolerance, 0.1, whoops. And then I can get that to display on my report. So I've got a green tick there. And that is cylindricity. And the final thing we're going to talk about is runout. Um, so we've just measured a cylinder. We're going to use that cylinder as our axis for our, for our runout. Um, but so far we haven't got anything to test it against, so for that I'm just going to measure a, a, a circle. So looking at my screen, we've got exactly the same feature as what we had previously. We've got the cylinder, we're just looking at the middle of it now, and you can see there's a bore going through it. So we're going to test the run out of this bore uh, to the cylinder. So for that I need to measure it. So in my program I'm going to say I want a circle. And I'm going to use F scan circle and just take three clicks. And that measures my circle of 100 points around there. Okay, so it's a tolerance, so I'm going to press the F3 button. And then across these, uh, these tabs here, I've got various uh, GD and T. Circular runout's the one I want. The reference feature is going to be my cylinder. And from there, I can give it a tolerance. I can say 0.05. And there it will calculate what the uh, circular runout is. And from there, you can see in my summary window, circular runout. In this example, I've got 24 microns. And again, if you need to turn on your uh, circular runout in your summary window, just go to Tools and go to Configure Summary Reports. And you can, you can turn it on. 
Okay, and that concludes our run out.